So let's do some examples of a monohybrid cross together. So we're going to pretend that we have a trait that is expressed dominantly, um, autosomally. So it's autosomal do dominant. So let's review what autosomal means. Autosomal are the chromosomes 1 through 20, 22 for humans, and they're all the chromosomes except for the sex chromosomes. So remember that humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so the autosomal chromosomes are chromosomes 1 through 22. So all the chromosomes except for the sex chromosomes. And in humans, that is considered the 23rd pair. Okay, and so our trait is going to be dominant. So let's pretend that I want you to cross a homozygous green with a normal colored nose. Okay, so green is our dominant trait. There are two possible genotypes for someone who has a green nose. They, we know that they have to have at least one G because it's dominant, and then they can have either a big G, big G, or a big G, little G. So in doing autosomal dominant examples, and the dominant trait, I have to tell you whether it's heterozygous or homozygous. Now, remember that there are steps to the pedigree um, problems that you have to do. So the first step is to write the genotypes of the parents. So for the mother, remember we're always going to write the mother first. It really doesn't matter who goes first, but if we all do it the same way, it's going to be easier for us to talk about and easier for me to grade. So we're always going to put the mother first. And so she's homozygous green. That means she has two big G alleles. So if we re review what an allele is, an allele is an alternate form of a gene. And we use capital letters to help us organize our thoughts when we talk about alleles. Um, we could use numbers, um, we could use pictures, it doesn't matter. But it's easier for us to remember big G's and little G's. And so for this scenario, we have the allele big G and we have the allele little, little G. So a person with the allele that, with a big G would make green pigment for their nose. And a person with a little g has no green pigment, doesn't have the gene to make green pigments. Okay? So if you notice for the father's um, phenotype or genotype, I didn't have to tell you homozygous or heterozygous because they have the recessive form of the trait. And the only way to have the recessive form of the trait is to have the two little letters. Okay? Step two is to fill in the pundit square. And again, it doesn't matter your setup, but for our scenario, we're always going to put the mother on the side and the dad on the top, just because it makes it easier for us to talk about if we're all doing it the same way. Okay? Remember that meiosis produced four haploid cells. So when we do a Punnett square, you'll notice that we have four total squares. So the mother has a possibility of donating a big G, big G, and a big G, big G. So those are the four possibilities of the alleles that the mother can donate or contribute to the offspring. Then we do the father's possible alleles. They go down. And then again, it doesn't matter um, whether you put the big G or the little G first, but for organization so uh, 
organization, it's better to put the big letter first. Okay? So step three is to write the possible genotypes. And so I can write what's in each of the four squares and then combine all the genotypes that are the same. Or I know that in this Punnett square that I have four big G little g's. Now when we start doing dihybrid crosses, it's going to be important for us to leave that four there. Okay, so always leave your numbers when you combine the genotypes. So that's step three. Step four is to give all the possible phenotypes. So with this genotype, I know that I'm going to have four green nose possibilities of the offspring. So 100% of the offspring will have green noses. Okay? 